Inflation is always a monetary phenomenon. And right now, the problem of persistent inflation is, yes, my friends, a monetary phenomenon. The MMT, Modern Monetary Theory, proponents always talk about the economy from an upside-down view. To start with, they think like the economy is closed and that the things that you purchase with one currency are all produced in one country. But furthermore, what they also say is that the level of problems of a government are not fiscal constraints, but only inflation constraints. However, inflation is showing a fiscal constraint. At the end of the day, inflation is the evidence of a monetary mismanagement. And when we talk about monetary mismanagement, we need to understand a few of the factors. Let's look at the first graph of the week. The first graph of the week shows us the, where the oil price is. And many people tell me, well, Daniel, inflation has nothing to do with monetary factors. Look at the oil price. Well, my friends, the oil price is a monetary factor. More units of US dollars going to a relatively scarce asset. The price of oil started to decline quite significantly, as you can see in the graph, in the time in which the Federal Reserve was doing two things. One, hiking rates. Two, reducing the quantity of money in the system. The moment in which the Federal Reserve has started talking about interest rate cuts and an increase in money supply, or certainly we start to see an increase in money supply, guess what is happening? Oil prices are going up again. So that is a monetary phenomenon as well. Let's go to the next factor, because this is a critical element. If inflation was due to supply chain disruptions, to the cost push inflation, to all these elements that people talk about uh, quite regularly when they try to show you the statist view about inflation, if it was due to all of those things, core inflation globally would be not slowing down, but in negative territory. Why? Because if inflation was created by supply chain disruptions and supply chain disruptions have finished, then we would not be in persistent inflation, but in deflation. If inflation was due to the uh, different factors that so many people talk about, cost push inflation, seller inflation, and all those things, those things don't make prices rise in aggregate terms. Those things make prices rise in unit terms. And unit prices don't move inflation. Furthermore, they don't consolidate that inflation, which continues to rise further. Let's go to the next graph. And if we look at that graph, what you can see is something very important that is also showing us why inflation is a monetary phenomenon and why it is not free for governments to go crazy on uh, fiscal policy. This is the, go the government bond uh, performance. And what we see is that since the beginning of the insanity in money supply growth and the persistent inflation problems, the decline in the price of bonds globally is not just very severe, but it's also showing that it's getting worse in the, neck, in the last months. And in those last months that you see, what are the bonds discounting? They're, they're discounting basically that inflation is going to be higher for longer. So the first consequence of the insanity in money supply growth, which comes also from the insanity in fiscal, uh, in fiscal policies, is that bonds themselves decline in price globally. Let's go to the next graph. 
And if you go to the next graph, another element that shows that inflation is persistent and therefore that those elements, supply chain disruptions, seller inflation, cost push inflation, are basically fake reasons to justify inflation. This is showing you why inflation is also persistent. The curve is showing that the US Treasury curve is showing you in the two year and in the five year that inflation is likely to be longer for a more prolonged period of time, higher for longer. Higher for longer means that it's not due to all of those elements uh, of, of apparent uh, impact, but due to monetary mismanagement. Let's go to the next graph. And obviously, you think, OK, but the United States is monetarily sovereign and therefore it can print all the money that it wants whenever it wants. Well, that is fake. The only reason why a country is monetarily sovereign is because they have the confidence of markets. And the confidence of markets doesn't last forever if fiscal policy is a disaster. So the only thing that can destroy the US dollar is the US government with a completely mismanaged deficit spending. This level of support for the dollar, which is very, very relative, can end abruptly the way that it ended for so many other currencies. So don't fall under the narrative that everything can be printed forever. Printing money, which is the other side of the coin of fiscal mismanagement, always ends with loss of purchasing power of wages and of savings and deposit savings. And number two, with lower growth and certainly with higher taxes. Keep defending freedom. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel, like my videos, leave your comments below and keep defending freedom. Thank you very much.